Today I have a this or that video for you. I haven't done one of these uh, for quite some time. I started doing these in 2022, which was my no buy year. Originally the purpose was for me to develop a better understanding of what was in my fragrance wardrobe and perhaps even pitting similar fragrances against each other to sort of maybe try and whittle down to my absolute favorites and I apologize because this type of video was actually received very very well when I first started doing them and people were asking me to do more and I just I just didn't get around to it so I'm sorry about that but I, needless to say I do have a long list of ones that I can do because I have been taking notes over the last year or so uh, so I am going to start trying to make my way through that because I am now at a point where I would like to start letting go of some fragrances that are similar to other things that are already in my wardrobe and maybe just whittling down to understand which are my absolute favorites and just keeping those. So for the first fragrance, I have to pull out my Unui Nomad um, Discovery set because I want to start with this one here. This one is called Nothing But Sea and Sky. This is a musky woody scent. Think, you know, um, Milky Musk by Parlamois or Sunny Side Up by Juliet Has a Gun. And I actually don't have a sample of Milky Musk here right now. I literally had it last week because I was comparing them side by side, but I'd, I've done something with it and I don't I can't find it and I guess that is the downfall of having a bazillion of these little vials is that unless you're very diligent about how you store them it can be very challenging to find a specific one at any given time. So I don't have Milky Musk with me but I do have Juliet Has a Gun. I have a full bottle of this one obviously and I would say that nothing but sea and sky falls somewhere in between Juliet Has a Gun and Milky Musk. To me, Milky Musk is very much um, more of a woody scent rather than a lactonic or musky scent. Yes, it is musky and it has that creamy tone to it, but the, the creaminess really comes from the sandalwood note and the sandalwood itself is very dry. And then it has this slightly fluffy muskiness to it as well. Sunny Side Up, however, this has much of a more of a molecular feel to it. It's even more transparent and translucent than uh, Milky Musk and it definitely doesn't smell. It does have a slight woodiness to it but it's not nearly as dry or it doesn't have nearly as much of a real wood feel to it. So, so those are the main sort of differences I get between this one and Milky Musk. By comparison then, Nothing But Sea and Sky is, as I said, somewhere in between those two. Nothing But Sea and Sky to me is more fluffy and less milky than Juliet Has a Gun, but it's not as woody and dry as Parlamois Milky Musk. This is really well done and if I didn't already own the Juliet Has a Gun, I would probably pick this one up as in preference because sometimes I do struggle with the molecular nature of the sunny side up and I much, much more prefer this more musky, soft aspect of nothing but sea and sky. In fact, out of the three of them, uh, the Juliet Has a Gun is by far my least favorite, but that is the one I have a full bottle of. So those were the main three that I wanted to compare across each other originally. But then a couple of weeks ago, I placed an order with Zerzhov and I ordered some samples. And one of the samples I ordered was this one, which is white on white. Uh, I'd heard a little bit about this one in recent times and I was curious. This one also bears some similarities to Sunny Side Up and Nothing But Sea and Sky. It has that lovely milky sandalwood aspect to it. It's also a little bit sweeter than all of these as well, I would say. And so I think definitely leans more in that sweet milky direction than any of the three that I've spoken about so far. White on White notably also has in its listing a fig note. I don't know if I necessarily get fig from this because what's jumping out at me on this one is that after I had it on my skin for a few minutes, it started to remind me of something else that I already had in my wardrobe. 
And that is, funnily enough, Cashmere by Quinto Canto. I don't know if you're going to be able to, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well, these darn reflective plaques. Anyway, this intrigued me because this is a very different type of fragrance and I've had this since early 2019. I've only worn it a few times. However, I do really, really love it. It's just very hard for me to wear because of the climate that I live in. This is extremely, this dries down to be very powdery, uh, very dry, and um, it can be a little bit choky uh, in really hot weather. But what was confounding me was the, the that the, the note listing between these two is quite different. I mean, white on white is, you know, all about musk and sandalwood with an ambery base. And this one is all about cashmere wood, patchouli, sandalwood. There's a langy lang in here as well. And specifically also a resin or a balsam called Kapahu or something. And it was really stumping me as to what the similarity between these two was. But I think it's the balsam uh, or the Kapahu in this one and the Tolu balsam note in white on white that maybe are playing very similar roles in these two fragrances. They're different notes in and of themselves, but I think they're both balsams or both resins. I think resin and balsam are the same thing. So yeah, it's really interesting. The Zerzhov smells very similar to the Quinta Canto, but the Zerzhov one is a lot sweeter. It's not as dry, not as powdery, but there is definitely a similarity between these two in terms of how they smell. And so I found this all, I found this all very interesting that I started off with, you know, a, a musky sandalwood scent effectively and I've, I've managed to come all this way over here to what is effectively I think um, considered to be a woody amber but I guess effectively with the underpinning notes being wood it's not that hard to make the jump between here to here through these other fragrances but really the similarity between these two really struck me uh, as quite strange and then also the similarity to this to even the Juliet has a gun and Juliet the sunny side up obviously is a lot more molecular and synthetic but the white on white um, is a lot sweeter and has a lot more depth to it and also has excellent excellent staying power and if I had to pick a favorite which I guess was the point of the discussion in the first place trying to work out which one I liked the best. Originally before these two came on the scene I was thinking that Milky Musk was going to be my favorite and it, and it still is out of those three I think Milky Musk definitely is my favorite. I do prefer that dry woody aspect however from the perspective of accessibility I think the Unui Nomad is probably the best one because you can just buy the smaller formats with this and uh, I do like the fact that you can choose to buy the fragrances without the fancy packaging and so therefore less of an impact on the environment perhaps um, and I think you save a bit of money that way too and with the way that um, perfume prices are at the moment I think that is a very compelling argument. I haven't compared the retail prices of Milky Musk against nothing but sea and sky to see if the comparative size bottles, if there is a discrepancy in price, but purely on the fact that you can buy the Unui Nomad in smaller formats, I think that makes it much more accessible. However, with these two in the mix, look, I very much have a soft spot for the cashmere because I love how this dries down. It is very powdery and it can choke me out, but this also has a really great scent memory for me because I bought it in Barcelona on my first overseas holiday with Matt. So it, it, it does hold some sentimental value for me and I don't think I'll ever want to part with it for that reason. However, I do think that white on white is more wearable than this one because this one doesn't get quite so dry and powdery. It does have more of a fluffy, 
almost creamy dry down and um, it is a little bit sweeter as well so I guess it, it is more more appealing from that perspective if you if you like to have a bit of sweetness in your fragrance and I think that this one even though it is a Zerzhov and possibly could perform like an absolute monster in terms of projection and longevity <laughs> uh, I feel like this sort of scent profile is totally acceptable for wearing pretty much anywhere uh, you could be walking the dog you could be going to the office you could be going out for an evening out and i think this would play very well across all of those scenarios whereas i think the cashmere probably you really only can wear this a on cold days but also probably only for more formal occasions i don't think this is one that i would wear to an office so then it comes down to, I guess, between this and Milky Musk by Palomar. I think the Palomar is definitely more accessible for daytime wear and hot weather wear. Uh, but if I'm really, really honest, I have really been enjoying wearing this sample of white on white. I don't know, there's just something about the sweetness in here. It's got just the right amount of fluffiness. Uh, there's a little bit of woodiness, even though it doesn't have that dry woody aspect of the Milky Musk, which I really, really enjoy. I have to confess, though, that I don't always want to have that really dry woody aspect. And sometimes I want something that's just a little bit more in the middle, in which case I would say this one's probably my favourite. And between this one and Nothing But Sea and Sky, Nothing But Sea and Sky is much more airy and also feels like maybe even a little bit salty compared to this one. Although when I was just smelling this on its own, I didn't really pick up um, a salty note. I don't know if there's, I can't remember if there's ambergris or anything like this in there. But in conclusion, I think that possibly white on white would be my favorite for, you know, every day. And uh, I would still want to retain the cashmere for you know, more formal occasions. Um, however, at, as it currently stands, I have a full bottle of Sunny Side Up and a full bottle of this, and I don't own full bottles of any of the other fragrances that I've talked about. So, you know, I probably don't need to buy another one. Although, you know, I, I have to confess, I do really love the bottle of White on White, the Zerzhov. It just looks so, so pretty. So I think, you know, there, there may be a bottle of white on white in my future, but if so, perhaps I can say goodbye to the Juliet Has a Gun because um, I, I don't think, even though these two side by side are quite different, they all fit within the same realm. And I don't think that I need to have multiples of things that, you know, satisfy the same urge. Perhaps one day I will be inclined to get the white on white. But anyway, they that's my main comparison. So as I said, the Palomar Milky Musk is much more woody and dry. Nothing but Sea and Sky is more musky and fluffy. Juliet Has a Gun is more um, molecular and milky. And then white on white is more creamy fluffy but also has a, a really lovely ambery sort of base that gives it a bit of sweetness and then the cashmere even though it draws the greatest similarity to the white on white because of the balsams in here um, this one also is quite woody and a little bit musky but i would say a, a lot more powdery than all of the others and therefore um, a little bit more difficult to wear in hotter weather. Hi guys, I just wanted to come back and circle back on this quickly. I just got back from walking the dog. I thought I was done with this video, but I just, while I was out walking, I was mulling over my descriptions of these and um, how I grouped them together. And I just, it occurred to me that I could have done a slightly better job of giving you some clarity around similarities and differences between them. So basically the woodiest fragrances in the list are Milky Musk, which is definitely the driest and the woodiest. Zerzhov, I think also is quite woody in comparison to the others. Um, cashmere is woody, but I think it is 
primarily more balsamic, but it does have that cashmere wood in it. And then if I was to pick the sweetest out of all of these, I would say the Zerzhov's White on White and Sunny Side Up are the two sweetest ones out of this range. And then the freshest uh, out of the two, sort of the, the more laundry clean, musky, fresh ones are probably Sunny Side Up and Nothing But Sea and Sky. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit more of an idea about where these sit on the spectrum from woody through to milky through to sort of fresh and musky. And then obviously the cashmere is the odd one out. And when I said earlier that these two are similar, possibly from the balsam note in here, in each of these, like the Zerzhov has a tolu balsam note, and this one has a kapahu balm note, which I think also is a balsamic note. Um, and I think those two things are imparting this sort of a little bit of this fuzziness to the fragrance, which does seem strange to conclude that maybe the balsamic notes are creating the, the powdery fuzziness in these fragrances. But it did also occur to me that Tolu by Ormond Jane is also very powdery. And I always thought that perhaps that was from the Tonka in the fragrance. In hindsight, it might actually be the Tolu balsam that's imparting that powderiness because that also has this same sort of fuzzy powderiness, not, not a powder powderiness, if that makes any sense. I think I'm talking myself in circles here. So anyway, I just thought I would circle back and provide that clarification. Uh, hopefully that helps you to visualize what I'm getting from these fragrances and why I think that they're quite similar. Anyway, so that's my, my little comparison and thought process. I don't know if you <laughs> would have found that particularly helpful or interesting, or if you were even thinking about comparing or wanting to know what these ones were like. Um, but these ones are just ones that I've been playing with recently and hence they were forefront in my mind. And I'm sorry I didn't have the sample of Milky Musk with me, but it'll probably reveal itself within five minutes of me packing up this video, but so it goes. All right, um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. And just as a side note and completely unrelated to the topic of this video, uh, you may have noticed this new ring that's on my thumb today. Uh, I actually made this ring today at a workshop. Matt and I did a ring making workshop earlier in the year and we actually made each other's rings. I made his, he made mine and we used them at our civil ceremony as our wedding bands because we wanted to save the fancy jewellery for the French ceremony. And I often do wear that other band as my wedding ring when I'm you know, going to the gym, when I'm doing something where I'm worried that my jewellery might get damaged because it's just a simple band and it's easy to fix if something goes wrong with it. And anyway, Matt's daughter quite liked the idea of making a ring for herself. So we booked in for all of us to go and do this ring making <laughs> workshop again. And I think we will do more actually, because uh, I think I'd like to do some silver stuff as well. But I bring it up purely because I think it's a really good gift idea and something fun and unique to do. I will link the details of the workshop that we did uh, in the description box below. If you are in Australia and you live on the East Coast, they run these workshops all across the eastern seaboard. So uh, you'll be able to find something close to you, hopefully. But I'm sure there are other workshops out there as well. Uh, I have no affiliation with this organisation and I don't aspire to have an affiliation with them or anything like that. I'm just purely raising it as an idea, as a gift, because as I've been filming this video and looking at this ring and you know, admiring my handiwork, I might add, I just thought uh, maybe I would mention it as a gift idea given the time of year. I mean, I'm assuming this video will go up before Christmas. And also as we start to approach the new year, uh, I'd be really interested to know if there's anything in particular that you would like to see in 2024, or if there's any fragrances that you would like me to do this sort of an side by side analysis on, um, let me know and uh, I will see what I can do. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.